To love is to be vulnerable. The deeper our affection and dependence, the more vulnerable we are. You are the ones gathered today to hear the word. You love your people, and you are vulnerable to their death. What a miracle it is that we do love even when we know that all flesh is grass fading away suddenly. Sometimes we just have to admit it. Sometimes to say, I love you, is a declaration and assertion in the face of all evidence to the contrary. It is the being grasped by and the being held in a reality present with but contradictory to the reality known by sight. Yet such is the paradoxical mystery of life. Life in this broken world where the Lord provides us that even love itself is hidden beneath the sign of its opposite. So there's John, caught up in his vision, witnessing that throng in white worshiping before the throne of the Lamb, having one of the elders come up to him and ask, These, dressed in long white robes, who are they, and where have they come from? Now, to John's credit, he didn't blurt out what I probably would have. Hey! Nobody told me there'd be a quiz. No, John doesn't say that. But he does get out of answering the question by deferring to the knowledge of the elder. My Lord, you know the answer. John didn't know the answer. He couldn't look at the saints and know who they'd been. He couldn't tell by looking where they'd come from. What he knew by sight was insufficient. He had to be told. And so the elder tells him, These are the ones who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Such is the paradoxical mystery of the life the new life in the new creation which our Lord has given us by loving us, loving us unto death, even death on a cross. This is that paradoxical mystery that even such love is hidden beneath the sign of its opposite, salvation beneath tribulation, white washed robes of saints, beneath the Lamb's red blood shed by sinners, this God of ours declares, I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. The prophet admits to our truth, the truth of our vulnerability in asking, Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that good and bad come? With the prophet, we too have a truth to admit about God. To know his love is to first know his wrath. To know his mercy is to first know his judgment. To know his salvation is to first know his condemnation. Sometimes it seems as if our God is just daring us to love him. And, and sometimes, sometimes to have faith in God saying, I love you, is to hear it as a declaration, an assertion, in the face of all evidence to the contrary, it is the being grasped by and being held in a reality 
present with, but contradictory to, the reality known by sight and experience. It is by faith alone that we can know love hidden beneath the sign of its opposite. So it is that there on the cross, ugly and repulsive, Jesus died to draw sinners near to God. So it is that out of the death of sinners, saints receive the life of Christ. So it is that the Lamb who was slain becomes the shepherd of the host. So it is that you, gathered today to hear a word, God's word, that is a declaration and assertion of real resurrection in the midst of the reality of death, of real hope in the midst of despair's reality. What you know by sight is insufficient. You must be told. So God tells you. When our Lord Jesus Christ asserts, Blessed are, he does not lie. For his word is the word that brings all things into being. His word is the word that defines all reality. His word is the last word you'll ever need. For those who hear his word and are drawn to near to him through the cross, for those made daring to love him, for the ones gathered in, like you have been gathered in, today. For such ones, though you be poor in spirit, you are blessed in the kingdom of heaven. Though you be meek, you are blessed to inherit the earth. Though you mourn, you are blessed with comfort. Though you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you are blessed with satisfaction. Hear the promise to you in the word of the Lord. You will never go hungry or thirsty again. The sun will not beat down on you. God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. Such is the word God gives to you. Such is the promise God makes to those for whom Christ died. And he died for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, announced that while we were in the world, we would have troubles, that tribulation would abound. But he also announced that he had overcome the world. Grant that we would take heart from his promise. Heavenly Father, as your love pours forth in Jesus Christ upon your people and the places they live, give them ears to hear the word of your mouth, so that their eyes, their tribulation, their reality, would not deceive them. Heavenly Father, grant that we at the Institute of Lutheran Theology may hear what your word declares, though it be contradictory to our experience. Let us hear it, that we may declare it to others, so that they too are told of your love in Christ Jesus. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor 
and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.